Hi, I am Dennis and today we are going to install the United Manufacturing Hub on a flat car Linux VM that we will install on Proxmox, which will be the VM manager. Right, so we're gonna follow this guide here provided by the UMH and to follow along you will need a working installation of Proxmox on a computer at your disposal. So I have Proxmox open here on the right and according to the guide the first thing we have to do is of course to download the Linux image of Flatcar that contains the UMH. And it's important to realize that we will not have to install the UMH after uh, so on the VM via the management console because it comes packaged with the flat car. So by installing flat car on the VM, we will have already a working version of the UMH. So let's go ahead and download the correct ISO image. Um, we will choose the latest version, so version 0.5.5 at this time. And we see we have a large selection of images. We're going to need an ISO image because we're going to install it on the VM. We're going to choose for the 86 architecture because it's a normal computer and not some kind of uh, micro computer. And we're not going to go for BIOS. We're going to be more modern and go for the EFI, which stands for Extensible Firmware Interface um, for booting. So here's the image. And now we turn to the guide. The first step we have to do in Proxmox itself is we need to have the image uploaded to the local repository. And I already have it here, but let me go ahead and remove it for now and upload it from my downloads folder. So here's the image we downloaded and the image is now available in Proxmox. Okay, so next we create a new virtual machine um, we can give it, so the node will be on my existing node PVE. The ID 102 is fine, it's the same as in the guide. And let's give it the same name, IPXE, IPXE. And we're going to start the machine at boot for the first time. Right. So that's completed. We can go to the next section, which is the operating system. Um, and here Proxmox prompts us for the image we want to use for the virtual machine. And that will be the image we just uploaded to Proxmox. So it's available here. All right, we can go to the system settings now. The machine type we will change to the Q35 architecture. Um, the rest we can leave. Now we're gonna change the BIOS settings to use the UEFI. Because as you remember, we chose the image that supports the extensible firmware interface, the more modern version of BIOS. Uh, we're going to store the AFI storage will be in the local uh, VM. That looks good. Next, we're going to configure the disks. Um, we're going to use SATA here, 32 gigabytes of RAM. No, sorry, of, uh, of disk space is plenty. We can leave that as is. And because my hardware, that means the computer that runs Proxmox has a SSD um, and not an HDD, I can, I can use SSD emulation. So only do this if you're running um, your Proxmox installation on an SSD instead of an HDD. Okay, next. We're going to configure the CPU. Um, the type will be host all the way at the bottom here. And let's give it a minimum of uh, four cores. Yeah. Next, we're configuring the RAM. Eight gigs of RAM should be enough. So we're going to give it eight gigs of RAM. The network. I can keep this as default because I only have one bridge, um, VM bridge zero. The rest of the settings um, we don't have to change. Clicking on next. Right, so we have an overview of our settings. This looks okay. 
uh, and let's tick actually let's not tick start after created because we have to intercept the boot uh, later by clicking on escape because we want to configure some um, bio settings so the machine here we can see it by its index 102 it's not running it has a name ipxe so what we're gonna do on the first boot, we have to change a couple of things in the BIOS settings. Now to reach the BIOS settings, you have to click on escape while the machine is still early in the boot. So let me go ahead and start the machine now. And I'm spamming the escape key on my computer. And this is how I reach the um, boot settings. Now what we have to disable is the secure boot setting. For this, I will navigate to the device manager with my um, arrow keys and by pressing enter. Go to secure boot configuration. And here we see that app 10 secure boot has been checked. By pressing enter, we can uncheck this box and return to the main menu, escape and escape again and continue. Right, so uh, we're gonna apply it. And the machine is now restarting, it's rebooting. And this is where we now reach the Fredcore installation. So in the first part, we created a virtual machine. In the second part, we will install a flat, a configure Fredcore, which will also automatically download and install the United Manufacturing Hub for us. Again, this means that we do not need to install it using the management console uh, later. So the first step in the, um, uh, so we already accepted the license agreement by default. Um, the IP address of the machine will be provided by our DHCP um, server, which means that we cannot configure a static IP, or at least we will not do it in this basic tutorial. So click on enter. Um, it will prompt you where to install um, this, now on which disk to install it, on which partition. You can keep the default on SDA. And here we see the options and we can confirm on default. Right, so now um, the flat core Linux is installing and we can see it's downloading the UMH. And once this is completed, we will log into the new machine um, and check if we can access some of the services provided by the UMH, such as, for, for example, um, viewing the Kafka topics in Red Panda. I'm letting the installation run for now. Okay, seems to be going well, and that's it. Here we see that we indeed see the core at flatcore uh, dash zero dash install. What we can do now is um, essentially we want to remember we to configure the VM, we used the ISO image. Now that everything is installed, we don't need this image anymore. So we want to remove it from the optical drive of the VM. So let's go to up, no, let's go to hardware we see that we have here the CD DVD drive. We're gonna say do not use any media. And one more thing we're going to change is we're going to disable the start at boot. Essentially, I don't want this VM to automatically start up every time I'm enabling, um, I mean Proxmox. Okay, so that's it. We're gonna restart the machine one more time. Let's go for a reboot. So the VM is booting. There we go. And here we see that indeed we have the flatcore dash one UMA login, which means that um, just as you would with an installation from the management console, we can log in using the core user and the password is UMH by default and we are in. You can see we are now uh, essentially logged in the system as the core user. 
and the services should now be exposed on my host computer, which means that if, for example, um, I go to my web browser here and I have to know what the IP address is of my computer. So let's see if I can open the console. Ah, wait a second. I can maybe check it with IP route. Yeah, perfect. So I see that the IP address of my VM is dot one five six on my home network. So if I navigate to one nine two dot one six eight dot one seven eight, which is I guess the IP address of my uh, router, I think it was one. Let me check it again. One five six. Yeah. So if I go to one five six. And then, for example, I know that the Red Panda service is exposed at port 8090. So dash topics should lead me to the server. Now we see that um, it's unable to connect. Now, this is not really necessarily a thing to worry about. After installation, it can take a while for the services to spin up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and return um, after a couple of minutes. All right, so I waited uh, about two minutes and now if I navigate to the IP address of the virtual machine, which you can see here on the login, on the login screen, um, it's 192.168.178.156 in my network. Go to port 8090 and to topics and I'll see the familiar uh, red panda console where we can see uh, the three test topics defined. So to recap this video, we downloaded the easy image from the releases on the GitHub page of the UMH. We then created a new virtual machine in Proxmox on which we installed this image. Um, and by configuring it, we also in the image itself also installed the UMH. This means that we do not have to do anything via the manage console or anything um, else. Finally, we also checked that we can access the services such as Red Panda on this VM by navigating to the IP address, which is provided here. Uh, and then to the correct, the correct port. One thing to note is that this IP address has been assigned to us. We didn't choose it by ourselves. It comes from DHCP. We can theoretically also configure a static IP address, but this installation is more complicated and is out of the scope for this video. Thanks for watching.